Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Millions of uncollected PVCs force INEC to shift deadline. NLC, TUC, others endorse Tinubu and Sonwolu. Senate urges federal government to stop borrowings. Rejection of new Naira notes, a crime CBN's wants. Troops killed 50 terrorists in three weeks, says Defense Headquarters. Government woos Spain to invest in gas. Security policemen, um, policemen killed in security agents, kidnappers gun duel. Okay, which story? Just headline. Okay. Okay, so um, my neck, after the disclosing that we have about 93.47 million registered voters have decided to shift the date of um, stopping the collection of PVCs to the 29th of January for another eight days. So ensure that Nigerians are able to pick. They've also done an extension of a collection of PVC centers from, instead of from the state's uh, INEC offices to wards and uh, local, uh, local government, and wards within local government to sort of assist people to further collect their PVCs. Also in the story, they confirmed that the presidential election is holding on the 25th of uh, February, and that of the governorship and the Houses of Assembly will hold for March uh, next year as well. So please, Nigerians will ensure that we take advantage of the extension and do the needful instead of us complaining. Also, allegations of extortions have been investigated by an agency that is probing uh, people claiming to have been having to pay for the PVCs when they go to those centers. So INEC is on top of it, please. Mm. So um, the CBN, it's 17 days to the day we the, the, when we cannot use the old Naira notes anymore. So. The, at last, the CBN have decided to go to the markets. They went to the um, Wuse market in Abuja, uh, where they um, were trying to sensitize the traders that accept the money, it's good. And then they were showing them that if you hold it up to the sun like this, you will see it will be glittering. So what that glittering means is not fake. Okay. And that's... Um, that's, that's what they should have done since the whole well, of December. Since, mm, let's leave that one. Because I if I, I, I say I, I don't Wuse like Wuse market is not the biggest market too. And, but I'm uh, sure they are going there. They have plans they, for They also that, went to the one in, they, they went to they a, a market, market in Lagos. Um, in, a Balogu, they went to the Balogu market in Lagos as well. Um, and, and it will take time, but gradually, you can't mop everything up in one day, but gradually, mm. I hopefully they're able to, because at the end of this month, I think, mm. you, have, you can't defend the old news. I have to now remove all my money. Anyways, um, yesterday there was a rally in Lagos where the TUC, NLC, all endorsed Governor Sonwulu for his second term. Um, the labor movement in, in, in Lagos State also endorsed Ashwaji Bola Metinumbu, saying that the model he instituted in Lagos um, is, a, is the best labor friendly, has, has made Lagos the best labor friendly state. They also said that um, they cited the governor's landmark achievement in Lagos and his implementation of labor friendly policies in governance. And they're all saying that they cannot be one-sided or can they, they, they have to completely stand behind Governor Sonwolu and as an extension also supporting the flag bearer of the APC presidential candidate Ashura Jabala Metinimbu. Okay, let us move on quickly now to the punch. Budget deficit rises 370%, hits 47 trillion naira under Buhari Picture here of be guided by diplomatic practice, FG urges envoys. My wife unconscious for three days after sex triplets birth, says husband. Government Q4 and Ambra vigilantes bomb five buildings. EFCC shortlist 26 bidders for forfeited assets. 648 cases brought against president, says federal government. And ballot paper, local printers set to sue INEC. FG woos Spanish investors for seven oil blocks. Okay, which story are we starting with? I would like to start with the gunmen that killed um, four vigilantes in um, the Ihiala local government area of Anambra State. Um, they went there at, one paper said 1 a.m., this one says 2 a.m. They went there and they, <clears throat> they set, they first killed the, the vigilantes actually faced them and they, they killed four of them. One of their own men got killed. They beheaded one of the vigilantes and counted away his and took away his head. They, they set fire to about four or five buildings. An INEC building was one of the 
uh, buildings that they set fire to. Nobody knows the cause for the fire, mm -hmm. for the attack. Yeah. But okay, I was going to been... take the envoys that came from the uh, from the, the different countries. So our president yesterday um, had asked the envoys who come from various about six um, countries, I believe, um, to be guided by diplomatic practice and ensure that their activities remain within the limits, lim limits of their profession as they monitor the build-up to the forthcoming elections. If you recall, um, he had, there was a warning letter Buhari had issued about 11 months ago where he had um, warned the Czech Republic, Italy, Spain and Israel to stay clear of internal politics and remain within the limits of their schedules. So he had received a letter of credence from about six different uh, ambassadors from Switzerland, Sweden, Ireland, Thailand, Senegal, and I think South Sudan. So he was, he, and, and he, had, he had told them that it should, they're welcome in the country, but please stay within the limits of that which you've been asked to do as we approach the coming elections in February. So the um, Minister for Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, um, um, Malami, was talking at uh, the scorecard presentation of the Ministry of Justice performance under President Mohamed Buhari, and he disclosed that 648 cases were instituted against the federal government and some of his aid, um, agencies before state high court, federal high court, and ECOWAS courts, mm -hmm. and that all these cases are, of, are at different stages of trial. But then he also gave uh, good news on the number of convictions. So in terrorism cases of which they filed, uh, they had about 3,000 terrorism profiled charges. They filed about 1,500. They were able to get convictions of 397. How that one, this, I don't know how to put scale that uh, percentage of performance, but I think it is, at least it's encouraging. And then they had a total of 7,000 cases inv involving various offenses uh, uh, around maritime, armed robbery, vandalism of electrical equipment and pipelines, financial matters, cybercrime, kidnapping and anti-corruption, totally where they got convictions, about 7,000 under this um, administration. And so he gave um, co um, recovery of monies as well. He said we were able to recover about 6.3 million euros, about 5.4 million, sorry, 6.3 million pounds, 5.4 million euros, and uh, $390 million from various jurisdictions outside monies that, you know, were recovered from the sale of assets, uh, forfeited, um, uh, monies recovered from assets, and all of that, all of that put into um, major projects within the country were recovered under this. And those were his scorecard as a ministry. Okay, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We we'll still have one more story in point, YK. Yes, um, I wanted to take this story about the un unconscious, the lady who was unconscious after mm. she gave birth mm. to um, seven babies. Mm -hmm. Apparently, she, oh, I have to tell you their names. Um, he, the father is Celestine Uzodike. Mm. So Mr. and Mrs. Uzodike, she, they got married in 2020. And she, after she got married, she got a job with um, um, the Namdi Aziko University as a lecturer. She didn't get pregnant till this year, last year, sorry, 2022, July. They didn't tell them, they told them they were carrying twins and she was okay till she started getting contractions in December. She went to the hospital and they gave her some medicine, the contractions stopped. But they started again this month um, um, in January and um, they had to give her a, a caesarean mm. to bring out. And the husband said, if he, because they told her, him that he was twins, wasn't expecting anything. But if he hadn't been in the labor room, as they were bringing out the children, he said they were just being say they bought the first one, second, well, third. Call him see, he was just seven. The on the sixth one, the sixth one. Eh? Natural. No, CS. CS, it was CS. Yes, I know, there wasn't um, in vitro, because it's usually in No, vitro, she didn't like have it. IVF. She just oh, got pregnant. Dang. And um, as they were, he said the sixth one, when the sixth one came out, a girl, she was dead. But the seventh one came out alive. Now they've had to put these kids on um, in intensive care, and you know, the cost uh, of it, it's cost. nineteen million. It's a lot of money. He, he had a, he a had to rally one point something million for mm. them to even admit the lady. Mm -hmm. Now he's begging, 
May please help me as I'll, I'll, yes, I'll, yes. How do you have an umbra? Six baby, seven no, babies no. naturally. Does that happen? No. Uh, it, it can yes, happen yes. now. Some people naturally. have. It can happen. Then, Moriah, the side effect, you know, she waited. She waited mm. for children. Mm. Or some of these fertility drugs. It's written in most of them because I had to read them. Is you, you have multiple beds. That's one of the yeah, side multiple effects. Multiple is two. Hey, yeah, that's what uh, you think. Not For some uh, people, seven. When, when your body and God... There's a natural conception. Was, the baby was a no, no, no. There's IV. I'm sure no, there's IV. No, no. Hey. And she hasn't been paid. Since she's been working at the NAMDA, she hasn't been paid the, no. because of the anyway, IPPIS platform. Let's move it's on. not a hot to topic, but I'd like to appeal to the NAMDA state please, government. Please. She said they have actually reached out to her. I'm sure they would have. Absolutely. But they haven't. People have donated. They have... Uh, she he has one fifty. Yeah. Uh, this is he, a no brainer. Everybody will donate if you have to. The government will definitely support them the best. I hope so because we have to do something. The it's hospital been, has been telling them that it's, it's, good. Good. it's three million for one child. They don't losing all the children for yeah. someone mm. who's finally been answered. So the government, an anonymous government, should pay money. Is it not Soludo? Is that is Morel's friend? Daily Sun. Why you want international community on election? I took that story. INEC bows to pressure extends time frame for PVCs to January 29th. Government approves 24.4 billion for smart irrigation scheme. Um, FG recovers 6.3 million euros, 390 million dollars, and 5.4 million naira from proceeds of crime. GSS admits um, er error in Okupe's arrest. Supreme Court gives jailed Nwaboshi fresh date to challenge seven years imprisonment and don't hand Nigeria over to sick person, says Peter B. Okay, which story are we staying? Okay, let me take the DSS arrest. So, um, Doyo Kukwe tweeted um, that he was arrested on 12th of January on his way to the UK after collecting his uh, passport that has been withheld by the EFCC for so long. And the DSS came there and arrested him. But they've since apologized to him. They said, they called it occupational hazard. hazard. They said it was an error. You know, I think they forgot that he got an, a, a conviction and he has since served his term, which was a fine. And he was a free man now. He, was, he could take his passport and leave. But as was, you know, he's well, been Mark, released since then, Sharp. The, 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 he was put on the watch list in 2016. Mm -hmm. Well, my own problem with this is, are you saying he has not traveled out of Nigeria since 2016? It's possible now. Passport was not with him. How did he go? It's possible he hasn't traveled. Mm. No, that's, anything is possible in this country. That's unfounded mm. for someone like you, but mm. other people, it's very normal. I'm not traveling since 2016, eh? It's not a big deal. Abi, ah, look at who he's talking. <laughs> it's someone like you, it's <laughs> normal. You're always like, going. Ah, no, you ah, no, me. this is he, He's going for medical clinic. That means yeah. he hasn't been for medical. He has not seen doctors since 2016. Yeah, it's possible now. Yeah, let, me, let me take this story from Naseni. So, the executive vice chairman and chief executive of the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, Professor Muhammad Sani Haruna, yesterday said that the president had approved 24.4 billion for the phase one of the nation's smart irrigation scheme as the nation tries to promote multi crops season and farming program. According to them, they're going to be working closely with the Czech Republic to help in modern agriculture and manpower training in mechanized farming. This is good news for a lot of farmers because they're going to be um, establishing six um, agricultural machinery and equipment development institutes across the six geopolitical zones. And for those of you in farming, this is a good opportunity to learn more about mechanized farming and get some insights on how to uh, improve uh, farming across. Well, I, think, I think this is a good initiative from Naseni. And I think they, they also talked about automobile. I, I read a story from them this week already. They're already doing another, uh, I think it's an industrial um, hub they were creating across three or four states within the nation. So good initiatives from this um, agency. Moving on quickly now. So, to, uh, you, you the, the, yeah, the Supreme Court, um, they gave a reprieve to Senator Nwabushi, who was jailed for seven years. They said that um, he, he was... Um, they gave the dates for his his, his appeal. appeal to uh, November 2024. That's next year. So, <laughs> so they say, uh, uh, yeah, can you, if you give it November 2020, he would have served almost all his jail term. That please, so, so they've now given him February 2023. Oh, okay. All mm. right. All right. Moving on, Vanguard. Petrol scarcity lingers as private depots sell at 240 naira to the litre. Obi challenges other candidates on educational records, health status. Headsmen destroy 30 hectares of cassava farm in Undo. 
IPOP disowns alleged female executioner. INEC extends PVC collection deadline to tw January 29th. Okay, which story? The headline. So, reality have come, sadly. Ipman is insisting that, you know, petroleum products will continue to go up till June when federal government removes subsidy. And Vanguard went to the private depots to find out and what Vanguard meant was 240 naira was what they sold this week. As against 225 naira per liter that they sold last week at the depots. So by the time the petrol, they come out, reach your feeding station neighborhood, you know what you are buying. So um, they said this increase represents 6.7% uh, of that, uh, of the increase of uh, cost of petrol. And they went to the, what's formally, what we follow, formally call the DPR, the Chief Executive of, Officer of the Nigerian Midstream Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, which was the former DPR engineer, Farouk Ahmed, refused to uh, respond to uh, Vanguard's inquiries on why this is happening. And they found out also that all the depots previously closed by the NMDPRA have been opened. So the Bluefin, Bluefin, Ran Oil, Rain Oil, Adova, Nepal, and when they were shot for selling above 148 Naira per liter, when we were all shouting, have all been reopened. And other depots uh, were selling at 200 Naira per liter. So this is just showing the irregularities. It's like they want to escort us to this removal of subsidy mm. by force, by fire. So. Yeah. I think we it's should a, just... A, hey. The gradual ushering into that realization hey. that we're going to consume a foreign and, product, it was paid for And foreign. a silence from the agencies who are claiming to be on top of the situation. That's the one that's paining me. The Abosi, all the pretense. So, yeah, so, if, if they don't do Abosi, you will carry placard and down. There is this Abosi that is... That Abosi so that they should be us. And that's what Nigerians oh, need. Please. If we go the right way, they will, they, will, they will stop it. But if you use all this small, small gimmick, gradually the entire system, you start paying for whatever you don't know. You know, let's move on to it. <laughs> man. Um, this is a really sad story, painful story. Um, a gentleman, he was a former Information and Orientation Commissioner in Ondo State, Dr. Eddie Olafeso. He was saying that um, 30 hectares of his land, or cassava land, was being destroyed by headsmen and their car and their cattle. Mm -hmm. Said mm -hmm. that they, he de they, um, they destroyed um, products were estimated about 10 million naira belonging to his, 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 his farm. And, um, and the entire 30 hectares of cassava farm were destroyed by the cows brought by the headsmen. And, I mean, he was quite pained. I mean, he was close to tears while he was explaining. Mm. He tried to write to... Someone who government. watched it said he was almost... He was even actually crying. Yes, it was and really um, painful. So the headsmen uprooted the whole cassava. They the uprooted it and, they uprooted fed, it and fed it to the cows. 30 um, hectares of land. Really, really painful. And they've already gone. They, so they can't must... really find them. No, you I mean, can't find them. Can't, they've, they've gone already. Mm. So the plants and back on a harvesting of the cassava and they had to reinvent the money actually in uh, more capital projects. But unfortunately, with this that happened, he won't be able to do that. He has written to the governor, uh, Governor Akiri Delu. Hopefully, there will be some kind of I hope compensation. Amoteko can investigate because also, they usually leave a trail. It's also, also written to Amoteko. Amoteko and they're hoping to mm. investigate this mm. incident. Mm. Okay, let's see how much minutes we have left. We, we have run out of time. Is there any important story in Tribune? Let's find a story we've not taken. Ah, I wanted to take the Ibira land. Let me see. Is it ready? Is it ah, you read it, please. Is it Let me ready? Go on, go on. I'll correct you. Is it in Tribune? You. Is it in Tribune? It's in Tribune, Tribune, yeah. No official letter informing me of Buhari's visit. Ohinoi replies below. Gunmen attack vigilante operatives, kill four in Anambra. Um, don't interfere with our election. Buhari wants foreign government. That's Tribune. And Obasanjo denies writing UK on forthcoming elections. Okay, so yeah, that story. the president had visited Kogi State and... Um, Part of the duties was that the Okinawa of Ebira land would be receiving him and, you know, part of just those ceremonial duties. But he wasn't informed officially by writing no, no, or anything. Not only was he to receive him, he was supposed to receive him in the new palace. In the new pa a supposed new palace he wasn't aware of. Mm -hmm. A yeah, supposed continue. new palace that he wasn't mm -hmm. aware of. And so when he was informed by the commissioner on chief tenancy and all of that duties, the night before, at about 8-something p.m., he prepared as to, to receive him in his palace, only for him to hear he was to be received. The sad thing was that he said the bombing happened that prevented all the preparations he had made within his palace to even host the president to happen. But then he is now receiving a query from the state government that he was not part of the entourage to receive the president. And somebody was made to represent him and read a letter he supposedly wrote at the event held at another uh, mm -hmm. venue. Mm -hmm. And nobody has even referred to his palace, he doesn't know how for a new palace. All this gimmick, eh? Could give people. Why. 
Go mm. give people. They are said there was a grand drama. reception held. <laughs> they have to run. And then and another then person unknown to me yeah. represented me and I read, read out my welcome speech. Thank you. And now and they wrote him a paragraph of uh, several paragraphs of query. They have to yeah. run. Is that not your higher below? Uh, easy, easy one. Okay, only one. The, the, Number one. Let us go in. Well, after him, anyone is a rival. Please, this is your higher below for us. I beg. Ah, is my god. I have relatives in Kogi. That's all we can take off one page with you. When we come back, we're going to our hot topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back.